So if you're watching this video, you're more than likely a bike owner looking for a bike rack of some sort. And if that's the case, there are so many to choose from. And also you gotta consider how many bikes are you gonna wanna be hauling? And also the other thing you wanna consider is the cost of the bike rack. Are you looking at an entry level bike rack or do you want something that's gonna be premium that's gonna last you for years? Now, these are all questions that I've thought about over the last couple of years, and I've been eyeing single bike bike racks for quite a while now. I personally have been using a Kuat Huck tailgate pad for the past year and a half, and this tailgate pad works really, really well. It'll hold right around five bikes and costs less than $400. And in the scheme of things, for a bike rack, that's super cheap. And over the past year, I've been reviewing a lot of e-bikes, like this particular e-mountain bike, but I also review a lot of fat tire e-bikes. And those bikes get upwards of 80 to 90 pounds. And when it comes to lifting one of these heavy bikes over the bed of this truck, it's not only a challenge sometimes, but it can also be a little bit dangerous. And that's where this beauty comes in. This is the Piston SR by Kuat. This is their brand new single bike rack. Now this rack was originally designed to be for a roof rack, but they adapted it to where you could have it on a trailer hitch. Now, one of the things that I like about this rack is how close it sits to my truck. It gives me plenty of room for my pedals, but with the arm to my bumper is about seven inches. And the actual rack itself is about eight inches away. So there's plenty of space, but it's not so far out that it feels like it's obtrusive. Now, the reason why this rack is called the piston is because of these pistons right here that help raise up these arms. To get this piston to actually work, you're gonna just simply push down, this locking mechanism will drop, and then you can just simply hit this button. And look at that Kashima Gold, beautiful. And this works the same on both sides. Now, the one thing that makes this bike rack different than some of the other brands that look similar to this is this one-handed operation. Until you actually use this, you don't realize how handy this actually is. Especially if you decided to put this rack up on the roof of your car, having a one-handed operation is a game changer. Now, no matter what size of tire your bike has, or if you have fenders on it, this rack is fully set up for it. And the really cool thing is, you don't need any tools to change the height. You just simply just push together two little buttons and this part right here will slide up and down. Now something we'll talk a little bit more about later is this little bump stop here. The Kashima coated piston will basically sit on this, preventing this arm from going back too far. Now underneath this Kashima coated piston here, there's actually some ridges. And whenever you go to pull this back, you'll start to hear it click. And that fully engages this arm and prevents it from going back further. It can only go towards the bike once you start locking this in. Now the tray system here is capable of handling a tire all the way up to five inches wide. So if you've got a fat bike, this thing will have no problem carrying it. Now the tray system's wide enough to be able to handle a bike that has up to a 53 inch wheelbase. So this can handle a very large modern mountain bike. And also if you have one of those massive e-bikes like this with four inch wide fat tires and a 20 amp battery that weighs nearly 85 pounds, you don't have to worry about it because this bike rack on a vehicle can handle up to 100 pounds. And if you have an RV, it can handle up to 67 pounds. So it'll handle just about every bike out there. So that brings me to another point. Most bike racks out there aren't actually RV certified. If you have an RV and you wanna use a bike rack on it, you definitely wanna make sure that you get one that's certified to be used on an RV. The forces that are put on the tongue of your RV are definitely much greater than what they are on the back of your truck. Now, one thing whenever the piston first came out, a lot of people didn't really like is that there wasn't an integrated lock. But on the Piston SR, they've actually integrated a lock. It conveniently slides into the channel and then there's a lock right here in the center that you can just plug it into. And yes, I'm definitely aware that a bolt cutter could cut through this, but having a lock system built in is a really good deterrent for those that would just wanna walk up and take your bike. And my favorite part about this whole thing is that it slides right back into this channel and stays tight with a magnet. Now you may have noticed down here, I removed the bump stop to prevent this arm from going back further. And that's because I wanted to be able to hook up the e-bike ramp to this. So once you remove this bump stop, you can actually push this rack arm all the way down. And by doing that, it'll allow you to hook up the e-bike ramp. So this separate piece right here is the e-bike ramp. It's just got two little thumb screws right here that you tighten and loosen. 
and you can extend this out and then tighten them back up. And now you're ready to install the e-bike ramp. With the arm all the way down, you just simply just set it right on top of the arm. And then you can roll your bike right up on here and then remove the ramp to be able to put the arm back up. Now, yes, this e-bike ramp is not perfect. And I'm gonna go over the things that I really don't like about the e-bike ramp, but also I'm glad that they offer it because it does work and it does do a good job. But there are a few things that I wish were different considering the premium price of this bike rack. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how this actually works. So you're gonna wanna push down on these, release the little levers right there, once you do that, you can just simply hit the buttons to open up the arms. Really easy process. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have these arms set to the proper wheel height for your type of bike. Mine's gonna be a 29er. Now, once you've got both of them set, you can grab your bike and you're ready to install it. It's a pretty simple process. What I like to do first is put the front wheel in, slide it forward, and then put the back wheel in. Then you can just simply lightly press up on the tire, making sure that it's centered and then make your way up over to the other one. Once you've got one wheel locked, you don't have to worry about holding onto your bike. Then you can just go back and forth until the bike feels pretty tight. And the one thing that's really nice about the Kuat racks is that they lock into your hitch and it's basically one with your car. So this thing is not gonna go anywhere that your vehicle's not gonna go. And then to unload it, it's just as easy of a process. You just hit the button, unlock the pistons, and then you can roll your bike forward and out. Now let me show you how the e-bike ramp works. In order to get the e-bike ramp on, again, you just pull down on this arm. Once you've uninstalled this bump stop here, then you just push that all the way down. Then you can load up your e-bike ramp. Make sure it's locked on there. Then we're going to load up my daughter's favorite bike. This big old fat tire bike. You just simply line up the front wheel with the ramp. And then you start pushing it up line up the back wheel. Once you've got it lined up, you just guide that front wheel on there and all the way over. And once you've got that on there, you can just simply lock this front one down. You don't have to push down too hard. Once that's on there, the bike is gonna stay. You don't have to worry about it falling over. Now you may have to pick up the back tire to get this ramp off, but with this particular one, it's a short enough wheelbase that I can just pull the ramp off. You'll set that aside. Then you can hit this button to unlock it. It'll get about halfway. Then you can pull it up the rest of the way. Then you're gonna wanna set the tire height. With this one, it does have fenders, but being that it's a fat tire bike, I can typically get away with the 24 inch range there. And then I'm just gonna push that forward. Make sure that's locked in. And there we go. Now your e-bike's loaded. Now the rack will come with two sets of keys, one for the lock that holds on the cable lock and one that's gonna actually work for the hitch lock. They give you this really nice hitch lock right here. This pin will slide through your hitch and then this will lock right onto here. But they also put a nice cover over this because I've had hitch locks in the past where this gets filled up with water and grime and just salt and debris and it's really hard to actually use the key. Having a cover over it like this will prevent that from happening. Now, Kuat does a really good job of making their bike racks super stable and basically being like one with the vehicle. And the part that actually hooks into your hitch has an expanding ball that actually pushes against the inside of your hitch and prevents this from wobbling. I don't know how they do it, but Kuat definitely does this better than any other bike rack manufacturer that I personally have used. There may be some out there that do just as well, but the other brands that I've used have just a slight bit of play and that is not the case at all with the Kuat racks. And in order to tighten this down, they give you a special Allen key that has a hole drilled in the middle of it that matches the Allen key bit on the end right here. You simply just put that in, and then if you wanna loosen it, you're just gonna turn it counterclockwise, and this will loosen it and allow you to basically remove the actual rack. And then if you wanna tighten it, you just go clockwise until it's pretty tight and then your rack won't move a bit. So to show the stability of this rack, let's go ahead and load up one of my mountain bikes and take it through a field on my property. This field is 
pretty rough. As you can see, the truck bed is moving around quite a bit and the bike is moving along with it. So you can hardly see any movement other than the movement of the truck itself. Then I went ahead and loaded up the Polygon T9 and went through the field again. As you can see, this is super stable. The camera is actually bouncing a lot more than the actual bike. And just to show the full stability on a regular road, I took it down a farm road that has kind of some pretty big bumps in it and was going about 50 miles an hour and this bike was locked on really well. So now that you've seen how stable this bike rack actually is whenever everything is set up properly, let's go ahead and take the air out of both of these tires and see how well it does with two flat tires. Now, just a side note, I'm gonna let all the air out of these tires, but I'm not gonna move these arms. So basically this is gonna simulate if you got say a thorn in your tire and you didn't realize it, you loaded up your bike and you started heading down the road and all the air leaked out of your tire while you were driving back home. I know that this was a pretty big concern for a lot of people who saw the reel that I posted over on Instagram that they were worried that once you got a flat tire, your bike would just fall right off. Now with both tires flat on the Polygon T8, Going through this field, you can see the bike move quite a bit more, but at no time did I have any worries about the bike falling off. I loaded up the Polygon T9 and took it out for a road test with two flat tires, and it was even more stable. So unless you're riding in some extremely off-road terrain, this thing is gonna hold your bike no problem. So that test right there proves that this bike rack is extremely stable, regardless of whether you have inflated tires or your tires wind up going flat while you're going down the road. Now this bike rack does come in at $657 on Kuat's website. You can buy this as a whole kit or you can buy it as individual pieces, meaning that the actual rack will be sold as a roof rack and then you can buy the hitch adapter and it just bolts on with four simple bolts. So you can go back and forth between either A, the hitch rack or a roof rack, depending on your car setup. Now I have to say that a single bike rack is not made for everybody. This is a real niche product. But for me, this is my ideal setup. And that's because about 99% of the time, I'm actually leaving my house by myself to meet somebody else either at a trailhead or at the start of a ride. I'm not toting around multiple bikes. And yes, I do have a tailgate pad for whenever I do need to take multiple bikes, but having a single bike rack that's super compact, super reliable, really high quality, and easy to load and unload my bikes is really, really nice to have. And I'm a big believer in the easier you make things, the more frequently you're gonna go do them. So if I can load up my bike in a matter of seconds and hit the road, then that makes me more apt to actually go on that last minute bike ride. Now the thing is, is there is no such thing as a perfect bike rack. There's always gonna be little flaws here and there, but the Piston SR comes very close to being the perfect bike rack in my opinion. Now the one thing that I would say is the major flaw with this bike rack is the e-bike ramp, but I think they can make this better in the future. Having it integrated into the actual rack would be super ideal. Now I know that's not perfect, and there are people that would say, I don't wanna pay for that feature. So right now, the way they've got this set up to where if you want to buy the e-bike ramp, you can, is really nice. Now I do have to say, removing that bump stop was oddly hard to do. It's one bolt and it should just come out real easy. But I found that Kuat's tolerances are super, super tight. So everything fits together really snug and I think that's part of the premium quality that you get from this rack. That's why this bike rack doesn't move or shift whenever you're in transport. So from now on, the Piston SR is gonna be my go-to whenever I wanna go hit up the local trails or just meet up in a group ride. But I do have a setup that I wanna show you guys here in a few weeks of what else you can do with the Piston SR. It's not just limited to a roof rack or a hitch rack. All right, guys, if you are interested in picking up your own Piston SR or any of the other Kuat products, I would really appreciate it if you used my links down below. That lets my friends over at Kuat know that you came from my video and it really helps out this channel. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you in the next one.